Hi everybody, it's Michael here with another video on 3D printing, particularly featuring RepRap 3D printers. Today, this is going to be a fun one. Uh, what you see before you is the new version of the Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3, which is called the Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3V. And if you've seen my previous review of the original i3, uh, I really like that printer, and I really didn't see there was a whole lot of room for improvement, and yet somehow there was. And what you see before you is uh, Colin at Maker Farm's latest iteration of, uh, of the i3, called the i3V. Now, why is it called the i3V? It's because if you'll notice that uh, rather than using a uh, smooth rod and linear bearing construction the way that the i3 did, what you have here are these 20 millimeter open beam uh, V-groove extrusions. And rather than using a linear bearing, there's a Delrin wheel that runs inside the V-groove right here. Now, what does that do for you by itself? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, obviously a big 20 millimeter square box section is going to have a lot less weakness as far as twisting or stretching or bending goes. So overall, you're going to get a much stiffer uh, carriage. The same goes for the z-axis and also the y-axis. So overall what we've got is a much stiffer design. Also the Delrin wheels running through the v-groove are quite a bit quieter than the old style linear bearings running over a smooth rod. And if you've had an i3 or any other uh, sort of traditional RepRap style printer before, you know that the sound of those bearings running over the smooth rods is at least 50% of the noise of the printer. So this one actually prints quite a bit quieter and because it is stiffer, I think I'm able to run this just a significant amount faster than I was on the i3. So overall this is a pretty significant design improvement. In addition to having quieter and stiffer motion, I've also noticed that, uh, and if you've seen some of my videos about the i3, uh, I did experience a little bit of warp on the Y bed uh, as, the, as the printer aged and spent a little bit of time in varying humidity. This one I think is going to have a much better time of that. The Delrin wheels are located almost right out on the edge, so there's really no flap for it to be, uh, for, over which for it to bend. And then these extrusions are quite a bit uh, further apart than the smooth rods were on the original i3. So I think this is going to be a much uh, stiffer design on the y-axis as well. That's going to be a whole lot less prone to uh, turning the, or to warping the bed. Now let's take a closer look at uh, how some of this works. And here we have the view from the top. As you can see, this is the exact same LCD controller that we know and love from the i3V as well as a number of other uh, Prusa style i3 printers. Now what we see here obviously is a close-up on the extruder and the X carriage. And uh, what I wanted to show you was how you go about adjusting the tension and what some of the concerns might be uh, when you are adjusting the amount of play that is in your X carriage. As you can see, the uh, top part has these two Delrin wheels right on it, and there's a third one right at the bottom of the extruder, or the bottom of the X carriage rather, that has an eccentric shaft on it. So as you, uh, and it has some flats, so you can turn it with a wrench, and what that does is moves the wheel up and down a little bit so you can adjust the amount of tension holding the carriage onto these two extrusions right there. Now the one thing that I did notice that I was a little surprised by, and I think this is going to be something you have to be aware of with any sort of uh, V-groove construction, is that um, anytime you're tightening a bearing down, obviously there's the balance between making sure that it's tight enough to hold it in place but you don't want to have any play there. So there's always that little bit of balance when you're trying to figure out how tight to adjust something. What I found is that when I was assembling the X carriage, what I thought was the right amount of tension in order to hold everything together turned out to be not quite enough. And so I ended up getting a little bit of play on the X carriage. So what I had to do was readjust that by putting a wrench underneath here and then uh, ended up just tightening it down a little more than I thought I originally needed to. Again, no big deal as long as you know it's coming. And uh, so I think that's something to keep in mind anytime you are using a, um, a printer like the i3V that does use the uh, V-Groove and Delrin wheel construction. Now right here is something that I see as being a rare weak spot in what is otherwise a very strong and robust design. And as you can probably tell from this image, what I'm going to be talking about are the end stops. In this case right here is the Z end stop and up here is the X end stop. And uh, this is something that I'm sure is going to be taken care of by the community or by Maker Farm in short order. So I'm not terribly worried about this, but I did want to point it out right now to um, 
just so you know what's going on. The major problem that I have here is uh, the way that the z-axis adjusts. Now this is actually held in place uh, on a, an end stop mount with a T-nut inside the extrusion and then a bolt holding the, uh, the laser cut mount onto the T-nut. So it's basically just bolted onto the extrusion. And that's fine as long as you want to make a big change. But as anyone knows who has ever leveled a bed on a RepRap printer, you need to make sure that you're making extremely fine adjustments because sometimes you're adjusting within one-tenth of a millimeter and there's really no good way to micro adjust this. The only method you can use to adjust it at the moment is to loosen that bolt, slide the nut up or down, and then retighten the bolt. So that's fine if you're making big changes, but obviously with a Z end stop, we're looking to make little tiny changes. And that really, the only way I've found to do it is with lots of trial and error, which of course turns out mostly to be error. Uh, but I did, I did eventually get it to where it needed to be, and I'm hoping that it doesn't move. Uh, the X end stop, there's a similar story right here. It's mounted, again, with a T-nut onto an end stop mount, and then it's bolted together. So again, it is effectively bolted to the extrusion. Now I gotta say, you've got these really nice slots here and that makes total sense. But here's the problem uh, with the X end stop. This one is currently all the way back. This is as far back toward the, uh, um, uh, toward the edge of the printer that I can get it. And when I move the extruder over, so that it strikes the end stop. If you look down at the hot end, which you can't see here, but trust me, it is several millimeters inboard from the edge of the print area. So I've actually lost a little tiny bit of real estate. Now that's just a little bit, and I'm honestly not all that worried about it, but it is there, and I felt like it was something that should be pointed out. Now again, these are, this is a little problem, and this is something that I'm sure someone's gonna come up with a fix for shortly. Okay, now that I've shown you some of the features and a couple of the little design issues that I had with it, I'll also tell you a little bit just about what the experience was during the build. And I am almost hesitant to say this because I'm sure that this is something that has been addressed and won't happen now because I actually did order this kit right at the beginning of the production run. This is actually um, introduced in about April of 2014, which is when I ordered it, and it is now August of 2014. So there's been plenty of time for Maker Farm to really kind of spool up the production machine on this printer. Uh, when I did get the printer, though, there were a couple things that weren't quite right. Some of the hardware was a little bit too short. Some of it was the wrong diameter. Now, luckily, I had all that stuff in my spares box, so I was able to go ahead and just get the printer built without having to contact Maker Farm again. Now, I know absolutely without a doubt that had I contacted Maker Farm, there would have been a uh, a replacement set of parts that had, would have probably been overnighted. So I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that Maker Farm would have made good on that. So like I said, I almost hesitate to bring it up and I'm sure it's not going to happen right now. Having said that, there are a couple other things I would really like to point out because I think these are, again, the i3 was something I didn't really think had a whole lot of room for improvement, and yet somehow Colin at Maker Farm was able to find little ways to make it better. Uh, not the least of which is, uh, I think over the last year or so, Maker Farm has really gotten uh, to figure out how to really make their laser cutter sing. The parts that I got were noticeably more cleanly cut and just looked like, like someone had a lot more practice driving the, uh, the laser cutter. Uh, that, like I said, the cuts were very clean. Everything just fell together nicely. Uh, there also were a couple little design touches that I noticed that, uh, that weren't on the previous version. For example, right here, you can see that the pins for the brace on, uh, as you're facing it, it's gonna be the left-hand side of the printer are down here. And the pins for the brace on the other side are about an inch higher up. And what that means, of course, is that you cannot put this frame together backward, which is pretty cool. So a lot of those have been keyed. A lot of, um, uh, a lot of things that, that I thought actually were slightly weak on the, uh, on the first version were rebuilt in a lot more robust and strong way uh, on the i3V. So overall, I think this really is a, uh, a lot of small evolutionary style uh, improvements and then a couple big improvements for example you know this this V groove extrusion is really a superior way to go I think over uh, over the traditional smooth rod and linear bearing uh, so overall I think this is you know a printer that I didn't think needed a whole lot of improvement somehow got a whole lot of improvement and I got to say I'm really impressed by, uh, by by how this printer works now again it's faster it's quieter and uh, just runs a lot better than the uh, than the i3 did which didn't run bad to begin with so I think this is a great deal also, interestingly enough, uh, I want to say that the uh, retail price on this kit is pretty close to what the price was on the i3 about a year ago, so it really isn't even uh, much more expensive. Now, 
on that same topic, if you do have an i3 and you're thinking about upgrading, uh, you don't have to buy a completely new printer. Maker Farm is actually offering an upgrade kit, which includes basically everything that you're not going to reuse. So you're going to use your same motors, your same LCD, your same extruder, your same hot end, and, uh, and, and most of that. But what you're going to get is a new set of laser cut parts. You're going to get the extrusions. You're going to get all the hardware you need to put all that together. So it really is a good deal, particularly if your i3 is starting to get a little long in the tooth and maybe it's ready for annual maintenance where you're going to be taking it apart and you're replacing all the bearings and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, this might be a good opportunity to, for not much more money, just upgrade it to the completely new printer. Uh, also, there is a new 10-inch version of the 8-inch, uh, I guess it's going to be the 10-inch Prusa i3V that has been released by Maker Farm. Uh, that also is available as an upgrade kit. And to be completely honest with you, I have one of those on order as we speak. So my old i3 is going to be rebuilt into a 10-inch i3V, and I'm really excited about that. And I will, of course, be showing you some video on that. So for now, uh, just to briefly recap, we've got a whole lot of improvement. Uh, most of the, the, the things that I saw as flaws with the previous i3 have been corrected. There's a couple really small new flaws with the i3V, but those are dramatically overshadowed, I think, by the overall quality of the kit and the, uh, the improvement of the design. So overall, I highly recommend this kit. I had a lot of fun building it. And I think you will too. And if you're looking for your first printer, I think it's a great place to start. And if you're looking for an additional printer, it's a great place to continue. So overall, this uh, printer, as all Maker Farms have in the past, gets my highest rating. So uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Go out and get one. So that's what I have to say about the Maker Farm 8-inch Prusa i3V. Uh, as I have more chance to use it and do some more prints with it, I'll be putting up some, uh, some more videos. And uh, once again, thank you very much for watching. I sure do appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me in the comments. And uh, if you like this video, please feel free to rate, comment, subscribe. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.